Okay, friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is carefully come over to your radiator cap and make sure that it's nice and cool to the touch. After that, turn it counterclockwise, lift it up, inspect it, set it aside. Now from underneath the driver's side front of the vehicle, let's come right over to the lower aspect of the radiator. We're going to go ahead and turn this little pet cock right here and the fluid's going to come draining out. Make sure you have a nice collection bucket, hand and eye protection at all times. Let's let this fully drain. The next thing that we're going to do is come right over here to the radiator hose where it connects onto the radiator. Go ahead and grab onto this clamp. We'll slide it up a little bit and pop this right off. Inspect that hose, make sure it's nice and soft and pliable. Now, typically, if you wanted to, you could leave it just like this and just kind of set it off to the side. But what you're going to find is it just keeps on flopping over. So I'm just going to go ahead and take off the other side as well. Same process. Set this aside. Now we can move along to removing the reservoir from this area. Just come right over, grab onto that hose. We'll give it a little twist, inspect it, set it aside. Now we can continue on to our two 10 millimeter headed bolts. There's one here, one right over here. Remove the reservoir. Moving along, we're gonna come right over towards the driver's side. You're gonna find your power steering reservoir. Remove this eight millimeter headed bolt. Go ahead and grab onto that reservoir. We're gonna carefully set it aside, making sure that we're not spilling out any of our fluid. Now we can start removing the top area of our fan shroud. You're going to find one 10 millimeter headed bolt right on the passenger side and then the same thing over on the driver's side in the same area. Remove the pair. Once you have both those bolts out, go ahead and follow that fan shroud down along the side. You're going to find two mounting points on each side. For these, what you want to do is just use some long nose pliers. We'll give this area a little squeeze and then we'll gently lift up. Do the same on the other side. Set the fan shroud aside. Now at this point, let's move along to this area right here. This is the connector that goes to the fan assembly. Let's go ahead and lift up on this red tab. We'll squeeze it and then we can pop this up and off. Now we can reach down in here, we'll squeeze this tab, lift that up and off, inspect it, come right up to this area here, we're going to pop it right out of its bracket. Set this aside, let's reach down here, we'll spin this right out of the way. The next thing that you're going to want to do is remove the fan from the water pump. To do that, you're going to want a little air chisel tool like this. We'll get it right on the nut. It's a 36 millimeter. And now we're going to turn this counterclockwise. Go ahead and spin it right off of there. Just be careful when it comes free. You don't want it to hit your radiator. Remove the fan. Set it aside. Next, we're going to move along to removing the serpentine belt. Before you go ahead and take this off, just take a quick note of the direction that it goes in over and under all of the pulleys. After that, let's go ahead and use a 3 8 ratchet. We'll come right down to this area here on the tensioner. We're going to turn this counterclockwise, and that's going to relieve the tension on the belt. Once you have that off of there, go ahead and pull this right off of the idler pulley, and we can relieve tension on the tensioner as well and remove our tool. Let's go ahead and get the belt out of here. Inspect it, set it aside. Next, we're gonna take the pulley off of the water pump itself. Now for me, I'm gonna use an air gun with a 10 millimeter headed socket, but if you don't happen to have an air gun, you might find it's difficult to go ahead and remove these bolts without it spinning. If that's the case, just go ahead and use a pry bar or a screwdriver, put it right in between one of the bolts in the center here, and then you should be able to loosen up three, rotate it a little bit, and do the last one. Once they're all loose, go ahead and pull it right off.
If it doesn't want to pop off, just give it a light pry. Set your pulley aside. With that out of the way, we can start removing some of our coolant hoses. We have this one over here on the passenger side. Go ahead and squeeze that clamp, slide it down, pop the hose off. Over on the driver's side, lower aspect of this, we have another larger hose. This is the lower radiator hose to the water pump. Squeeze the clamp, slide it down, pop it off. Now we're gonna move along to this upper hose right here on the water pump. Go ahead and squeeze that clamp, we'll slide it up. But for this one right here, we're not necessarily gonna be able to slide it off of the water pump yet. We'll have to continue on by unbolting it first. Now before we can start removing these bolts, you're gonna notice that this one right here is gonna have this line in the way. All I'm gonna do to take care of that is just come right up this bracket. You're gonna find an eight millimeter headed bolt right there. Go ahead and remove that so we have a little bit of flex from this line. Now the next thing we're gonna start doing is removing all 12 of our eight millimeter bolts. There's one here, there, and then just continue on by making your way all the way around the entire water pump. If you're unsure of where one of the bolts might be, go ahead and take a look at the brand new water pump. Go ahead and grab onto this. We've got some coolant coming out of it. Now we're just going to separate the water pump from the hose right up along here. There it is, friends. Let's get the gasket out of the way. After you have that out of the way, let's continue on by cleaning up this area, especially along the areas where the gasket's supposed to ride. Typically, that's going to be easiest using a nice flat razor blade. Just be very careful not to cut yourself. Once you have the engine cleaned up, it's going to be time to install our brand new water pump. Let's go ahead and turn this around to the backside. We'll take our gasket. We're going to try to line this up. You want to make sure you have it in the proper position so all of your mounting holes line up. Once you have it in place, let's go ahead and put this into position. Now I'm just going to go ahead and start lining this up with the hose and sliding it up. There we are. Now we can go ahead and get this in position with the engine and we'll start in all of our mounting bolts. After they're all started, we'll snug them up and then torque them to manufacturer specification. I have them all snugged up. I'm just going to go ahead and go around and I'm going to torque all of these to 89 inch pounds. Now that we have them all torqued, let's make our way back up to this upper hose. We're going to take this clamp and slide it right down into position. Time for the lower hose. Let's grab this other hose. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this down, get off any of that coolant that's in the area. Now let's make our way to this area right here. We're going to go ahead and pop this protective boot right off of there. Set that aside. Now we can start putting our pulley on here. We're going to try to line up all four of our bolt holes. We'll start in all four of the bolts. We'll snug them up and then torque these to 18 foot-pounds.
Now let's get this bracket bolt in there. Just go ahead and snug this right up. Now we can start installing the serpentine belt. Let's go ahead and take this. We're going to go right around the crank. After that, we're going to take this end and we're going to go right around the water pump here. Out and around the AC compressor. Up and over the power steering pump. Now we'll take this other end. We're going to come around this tensioner pulley. Up and over the alternator. And then we're going to bring this down and hold it in position. Let's go ahead and grab onto our 3 8 ratchet. We'll turn this counterclockwise to relieve tension and put the belt into position. Slide that under there. Go ahead and release that. Now at this point, you just want to double check all of your pulleys. You can see right along here, it's sitting perfectly on this pulley. Underneath that, there's going to be some ribs. If for some reason you're off by one rib, you're going to see that it kind of pulls off to one side or the other. You need to double check to make sure that's not happening. Otherwise, you're going to completely destroy your belt. Check all of your pulleys. Now we can start dropping this fan back in here. We're going to get this lined up with the water pump, hold it up against it, and then gently turn this to the right to start screwing it on. Now at this point, we're just going to go ahead and snug this up the rest of the way with our air chisel. We don't want to keep hammering on this, just essentially give it a couple taps just to lock it in. Now let's go ahead and spin this. We're going to start putting this into position. Lock that in. Now come right here, slide this down, listen for a click, and then lock it in with the red tab. Double check to make sure it's secure. Let's go ahead and grab onto that upper fan shroud. Now we're going to have to slide this upper fan shroud down onto the lower one. We have these little pitons that stick out. You want to make sure those line up and then right up along this side on both sides of the vehicle. Let's go ahead and carefully slide this down. We'll get it into position. Once it feels as though both sides are semi lined up, we can press it down to lock it in. Okay. Now let's put in our side bolts for this. Now let's get this back on here. Pay attention to the lower aspect. You have this little nub. It needs to fit into the hole that's in the fan shroud. Get it in position. We'll start the bolt in, snug that up as well. Let's go ahead and get this lined up, press it into position. Now we can get our upper radiator hose on here. If you're using your original hose, you can see that it's marked. One side says RAD for radiator, and the other side will say ENG for engine. Let's go ahead and get this into position. We'll slide it onto the radiator, all the way up against so it bottoms out. We'll also put this side onto the thermostat housing. And now we can start putting our clamps into position. Now once you have it so it's clamped down, just go ahead and double check to make sure it's in the proper position. Now we'll just do the same on the radiator side, and then we can move along. Now we can go ahead and get this back on there. Have a look at this lower aspect. That needs to fit right into the fan shroud down here. Slide that down. Now we're going to line up both of our bolt holes. We'll start those in, snug it up, and then we'll do this hose. Now at this point, we're going to go ahead and apply some vacuum to this. The reason why I want to apply a vacuum is for two reasons. First of all, I'll be able to check to see if I have a leak anywhere. Aside from that, by applying vacuum to this, it's going to help be able to draw the fluid into this, and I don't necessarily have to worry about air in the system. Otherwise, if you wanted to and you only had something like this, this is a funnel buddy and essentially it has some adapters in there. That's going to make it so you can bleed out the air in the system as well and fill it. I'll set this aside and let's get this started.
We're gonna watch this gauge right here and we want it to come all the way up and into the green. Now at this point I've had vacuum on this for a short while and I can see that the needle pretty much stopped. It's in the green zone and it's past the 25 PSI. So what I want to do is just go ahead and turn this off so I can hold pressure. And now we're just going to make sure that this doesn't fall. That's going to help ensure that, like I said before, we don't have a leak. If this needle happens to drop all the way into the yellow or even worse into the red, I know I have a leak somewhere. Let's let this sit for a minute and then we'll continue by adding. Okay, so it's been holding pressure, so let's go ahead and add the manufacturer's specified fluid. You want to make sure that it's pre-mixed 50-50 diluted. Okay friends, we got the car all back together. What's left to do now? Now you're just gonna wanna go ahead and start it up. You need to let it run for a little while. Essentially, we wanna wait until we can feel some heat coming out of those vents, and we also wanna wait until we can hear that cooling fan turn on. After that, you should know that you have all the air burped out of the cooling system, and at that point, you can go ahead and take this right off the top. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that you fill up that overflow tank. You wanna have it at least up to the maximum line on that, and then after you're all done all that, you're gonna go ahead and put on your radiator cap, Take it for a road test. Thanks for watching.